You know, we just got done having breakfast. It, it was pretty good. It's 30 below yeah. zero outside, and uh, we're sitting on the couch. We're actually just chatting some fishing, uh, chatting about our day on the ice tomorrow, which brings up a really good topic, and really the purpose of this video is to, to touch on doing your homework. Uh, much like a test in school, if you don't do your homework, not that I want you all to go back to school if you're not in school, um, if you don't do your homework, it's hard to take the test. And yeah. let's call the test in this situation a day on the ice. So the things I think we do off the ice the night before in preparation for a day on the ice I think is just as important. Uh, we were just talking about networking with buddies. Yeah. You know? I mean, you got to – you can ice fish and figure things out on your own a lot, and I definitely su suggest doing it because the satisfaction of, like, you know, figuring out a bite all by yourself, something off the wall that you've never done before is great. But <laughs> in general – Having kind of a close knit group of people, the guys mm -hmm. that you trust, chit chat about, even like neighbors at cabins, like just talking to people, communicating is probably the best way to get information. Right. And I'm not saying like, you know, I'm gonna go hound Matt for his favorite <laughs> fishing spot, but like, <laughs> hey Matt, like, have you caught a fish in you know this area of the lake ever this week? Like, you know, like mm -hmm. just getting information like that's, I mean, that's prime. Yeah, and I think. What it comes down to is like, we can't be everywhere at once. Like yeah. I look at myself, like I may be fishing a certain part of the metro, I, guiding the Twin Cities um, West Metro. I don't know what's always going on in the East Metro, but if yeah. I got network of friends, I can text somebody, ask some questions. It's really a number of things. Safety, uh, especially oh, as God. we start the ice fishing season. What are the ice conditions like? What's mm -hmm. the snow like? Uh, hey, did a lake winter kill? All that kind of stuff. Hey, is the access broken up? Uh, anything you could do so that the last thing you want to have happen, and this happened to me, is you show up to a lake and then you get to the axis and you go, I can't, I can't get on. Whether it's ice fishing or open water fishing, we've seen it in a boat many times where like water levels are low. I'm not, I can't get my boat near. I yeah. just drove an hour to the spot. So if you do some of that legwork ahead of time, talking to your buddies, they may quickly say, Hey, I'm gonna cut cut you straight. We got 16 inches of snow and five inches of slush underneath. Make sure you bring a snowmobile. Leave the wheeler at home versus mm -hmm. driving the two hours with the wheeler. Yeah. Uh, so you're, you're spot on. I mean, talking to your buddies, networking, that's most of the fun. Yeah, true. In my I mean, opinion. It's like, a, it's like a treasure hunt almost, <laughs> you know? Like And, like, if you do get to a lake and it's it's whatever, there's not a fish in there or whatever, winter kills, heck, maybe there's, like, five minutes away that mm -hmm. your buddy knows about that could be your backup plan, you know? Yep. You could take a terrible day and turn it into a good one just by putting the four-wheeler on the trailer going five miles down the road. Yep. You know, like, there's... Don't let yourself, your day get cut short because you didn't prepare mentally or right. do your research beforehand. And right. It could be for a weekend trip. It could be a trip in advance. Maybe you're planning this out in September. You right. know, your ice fishing trip to Lake of the Woods or whatever it is. Or maybe you're just winging it on a weekend like, hey, guys, let's go up north. Let's go catch some fish. Like, right. get that homework done beforehand, you know? Yeah. I, I also like to call bait shops, tackle stores. I oh, mean. Yeah. You know, these guys and gals that bait shops and tackle stores, that's what they do. I mean, yeah. they're there every day working. They're talking to everybody in the area. Uh, it's amazing how much I don't think we utilize that. <clears throat> I mean, if I pick up the phone and I'm working at a at a bait shop on Lake Mille Lacs, what do you think I'm going to be chatting about? What do you think I expect to answer? They want to pick up the phone and give yeah. you a fishing report, give you an ice report, give you a, you know, I'm telling you what, like, they're really biting on shiners. And then you might look at in your bucket and go, man, I just have fatheads and suckers. And they may go, you need some shiners. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, like to your point, preparing. And again, it comes down to, hey, uh, do you have plowed roads yet? How much ice? Are they driving trucks out? Yeah. Do I have to bring a machine? Uh, those are all things I think sometimes we just we overlook. We, we assume too much. And uh, I think we get caught in a rut. I mean, yeah, preparing for a day on yeah. the ice. I mean, aside of is like important. where you're going and like what the bite is like too, like the logistical side of things. Like, hey man, is your truck running? Four wheeler <laughs> starting? Like, yeah. are we gonna do this or are we gonna be like hoofing yeah. it? You know, all the way on the ice. Yeah. Do like, you have propane? Yeah, like stuff like <laughs> that. Like, I mean, it's gonna be minus thirty degrees. Uh, we should probably, you know, get that snowmobile in the garage tonight or mm -hmm. on the trailer or something versus sitting outside where you can't start it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Yep. Just per little things like that. Just think ahead of the... You don't want to be like, what can go wrong will go wrong, mm -hmm. especially when you're ice fishing and conditions suck. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think know? so many anglers just aren't aren't prepared. I mean, the last thing you want to do is get on the ice and plan that second. Oh, that, you're shooting yourself in the foot right away. If you don't have a point A, point B, point C, point D, plan B, plan C, plan D, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a problem. Because what if you go out there and what you want to do doesn't work? It's happened to people doesn't work immediately 
And then you sit there and you're wasting time. The only thing you can't get back, yeah. the only thing you really can't pay for is time. It's cliche, true. but well, it's true. Most people who are ice fishing, you know, will work Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Friday afternoon, you head out ice fishing and you have a day and a half really to fish. Come home Sunday. Right. Like you got to you got to make the most out of it. And then during the ice season, how many weeks do you get? Right. Two, two and a half months maybe. Yeah. It's quick season. You know? If you're in a wheelhouse, even more value to your time. Yeah. And we know how quick the season is because of all the events we yeah. have to plan. You only have so many free it's days. And, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that go into preparing. You know, we've talk, talked about the networking, building your, your friendships, building your network of, of anglers, your network of buddies. On uh, it's social gold. media. Social, social media. media now too. You can get some great information on your biggest Facebook groups mm -hmm. on about ice fishing. Like, But at the same time, you know, you take stuff with a grain of yeah. salt. Like, I'm not going to go venture across Mille Lacs to the mud because someone said they did it right you yeah. know like that you just got to be careful with that end of things but you can also like like I said get some good intel there you can't you mean you shouldn't believe everything you read on the internet don't believe everything you see on <laughs> Facebook just because someone bombed out to the mud from the southeast side of the lake doesn't mean you can get there from the northwest <laughs> but you bring up a good point it's a great networking tool I mean it's, yeah. it's social networking and social media and Facebook and Instagram and all the platforms yes. there's too many to, to announce is a great tool as, to build some as relationships. As new school as that is to the ice fishing outdoor game in general, like just your classic fishing reports in the newspaper, mm -hmm. you know, pick up your magazines, like things like that will help you right. every time you go on the ice as well. Like right. the fish haven't evolved in the last, right, my lifetime of fishing. They eat. <laughs> they eat. Yes. And they eat. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty much what a fish does. And reproduce hopefully sometimes. Exactly. Depending on the body of water. You know, another thing that to prepare outside of that, uh, is is with some of your gear. There's a few things. I don't want to get off on a tangent in actual ice fishing gear. That's not the purpose of doing your homework. But there are some homework things that I like to refresh people's minds on. Checking your line. That's one that Just drives me nuts with some people. They show up ice fishing and their line is old. It's coily. Maybe they haven't walleye fished yet this year. They've pan fished for the last month and they're going to go walleye fishing and their line's old. It's tangled. Their reels aren't working. Uh, they have a, a, a busted guide they didn't, on yeah. their rod because they didn't pay attention. So checking your gear, just doing a once-over. I mean, call me dumb or, or an ice nerd. That's fun stuff. Checking your gear, make sure your, your spoons are up to date. When you take yeah. your time to network with your buddies and get these fishing reports, a, a question you should absolutely ask is, what are they biting on? Are they biting on spoons? Are they biting on yeah. tikka minnows? Are they biting on gold? Are they biting on fire tiger? Are they biting on plastics? What kind of plastic? Homework means so many things. And I'm not trying to overwhelm everybody, but as you're having these conversations and networking, knowing what to do and how to do it is just as important. Yeah. I mean, I your agree. gear is vitally Charging your auger batteries. If I had a nickel for how many times I've heard people get on the ice and they get two holes into the day and their auger battery's done. Yeah. Thank goodness they're fishing with a buddy because it's a long day if you can only yeah. cut two holes. You just uh, look so at, you just look at things important. that could ruin your day on the lake and you try to minimize the opportunity of that happening. Right. Like you said, auger, uh, heat goes out in your propane, truck breaks down. like Stuff that shouldn't go wrong, but you definitely just take the go the extra mile to make sure it doesn't. But, I mean, we're out fishing in winter. like yeah. It's not like you can, you can just break down in the middle of northern Minnesota and be okay. <laughs> Did you break down today? 30 below oh, zero, man. not to be weird and awkward, um, bad things can happen. It's, it's more than safety. Accidents turn into tragedy, well, so it's important. Especially nowadays, attention. everyone, there's, there's a big, obviously people are ice camping, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who take their hub shelter and they bomb up to Leech Lake, Lake of the Woods, Winnie, just to go camp on the yeah. lake. And they might just be driving out a small SUV, a car. But like, there's no like hotel to like fall back on. Like, if your car breaks out down and you're miles out on the lake, right? Like, you need your equipment to work. Safety. It's a survival. And and one thing I've grown to do because my brain seems to be moving a mile a minute all the time, uh, whether it's stuff for for ice team and clam or guiding yeah. or the UPL or whatever, I've started making lists. I've yeah. started to actually write down lists. And if you go in my garage on the wall next to where I kind of store gear, recharge my vexillars, whatever, I got little post-it notes that list out, okay, if I'm guiding panfish, let's say, here's things I should remember to bring. Because as we, you know, anyone knows, watching probably, we're constantly loading, unloading, reloading our trucks, reloading oh our fish traps, gosh. reloading our drop-down fish house, whatever <laughs> it might be, stuff's going in, stuff's going out. You may not always remember to put stuff back in. Yeah, you leave the so, glove on the snowbank. There's, there's no shame in the game. Yeah. 
I have lists. I keep lists all over the place so that I can kind of do a mental checklist as well as a physical checklist of, oh, that's right, I, I forgot. Yeah. I, my, my bag of plastics. Yeah. Back, I would have left that on the workbench. Good thing I the, saw my list. The buddy system deal, too, is like, I have some guys that I go with, and I'm like, I know we're using his auger. Mm -hmm. Or like, he knows I have the bait. Stuff like that. Like, you right. can start relying on each other because, let's be real. The venison. The venison. If you need to cook back straps on the ice, well, I'm Drew, your guy. Drew will bring the venison, yeah. And the, <laughs> but, I'll bring the grill to cook it. So, um, you know, right, I was going to say, there's a lot of stuff that goes in ice fishing, a lot of miscellaneous items. It's not like you just hook up your boat, take off, and you have everything with you. Yeah. You have a lot of stuff, especially early season when you're loading up sleds, four wheelers. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So many little right? items, yep. It's you just want to get to the lake. Well, here's my ideal day of ice fishing is I have everything ready, garage is ready. Uh, trucks in the garage ready to roll everything's inside it. I wake up throw my bibs on throw my boots on grab a pop-tart <laughs> Coffee, I'm out the door. I know exactly where I'm going and, and why and why and Cause you're prepared because I'm prepared yeah, It makes and a difference that that being said like many times I'll strike out like mm -hmm. I like to try to find new stuff Like it's just it's fun. It's like I said treasure hunt mm -hmm. and you know Maybe I strike out nine times at one time it it goes well for me and boom yeah. You, you did it right. The satisfaction's there. Guess what? I'm going to snap a picture with the timestamp because I know that on X Lake, like this happened, take a mental note, maybe write it down. A journal? A journal, and maybe mm -hmm. drop a note in your phone, the weather conditions that day, because the fish are probably going to be doing, at least try to pattern whatever happened that day right. for future events. Right. I'm oftentimes looking on my phone at the date I caught a certain fish. Yes. Because I'll remember, time. like, it's funny... I can't remember to do something my wife asked me this morning, but I'll remember exactly the lure I was using on July 10th Dude, of 2019 to catch a six pound largemouth. But you can reference that and say, yeah, I remember like it was a hot day. Water conditions were like this or whatever. The and the same for ice cold. fishing. You know what? Yeah, I remember that. We just had a, a front come through with seven inches of snow. The fish moved shallow. The light penetration was different, yeah. whatever it might be. And I caught these fish, you know, but... All that said, I mean, there's so much we can do. I mean, we can talk about this probably for hours, and we have. Uh, but there's some tools, I think, too. Yes. There's some tools, especially on our smart devices, smart devices, tablets, mm -hmm. computers that help us catch more fish to do our homework. Um, let's hop over to a computer and show. Computer will be easier. And these tools we're going to show you, many of which you can definitely use on your smart device, whether it's yep. Navionics, Minnesota Lake Finder, Onyx, Contour Map Systems, topo Topography, Google Earth. These are all things I think are underutilized for ice anglers. So let's hop over there quick and show them how we use some of these things yep. to do your homework to catch more fish. So I hopped on the computer here. We were just talking about some of the software and some of the technology behind what we do to get ready and do our homework. You know, the first thing that comes to most anglers' minds is Navionics. You know, Navionics is an app. Uh, it's on your phone. You can take it with you. It'll show you contours. It'll show your position. A lot of anglers actually utilize the Navionics as their GPS for ice fishing. But one thing I always encourage anglers to do if they're at home, it's nicer to look at things on a bigger screen. Yeah. So you can hop on your computer or your tablet and go to Navionics.com and access their chart viewer, which is what I have pulled up here. I mean, we're just going to look at Malax for the sake of Malax. Everyone knows where Malax is. We don't want to give him your hot spot. <laughs> uh, so we'll uh, show Malax. So you can just see you got a good screen here. It's super simple. Uh, again, Navionics.com on the top is a button, chart viewer. You can go to here. Yep. You can go wherever you want. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. You can go to your favorite body of water. Here, I'll zoom in. I'll zoom in on the lax. You can use your toggle on your mouse or in the upper right corner, you can just zoom in. It's that easy. Here I'm going right out to a gravel flat. I can see the different contours. I can see the inside turns. I can see stuff. They have some level of, uh, of, of, of written communication to the angler, talking about maybe the name of a spot, things like that. All these things, because oftentimes the angler will tell you, hey, I caught him on Three Mile. I caught him on Banana Reef. I caught him on Sherman's Point. Yep. Sherman's Reef, Indian Point, whatever. The Navionics app is cool because it'll actually name some of those points. It'll give you a reference point. But, at least for me, I'm planning spot A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm planning all the stuff I want to fish. Let's say I want to dedicate my day to call, let's say, Fisher's Flat on the east side of Mille Lacs. Now I can go to Fisher's Flat and I can mark, I can start to mark some spots, you know, on, uh, on, oops, on where I want to go fishing. So if I scroll up, I can go to my favorite flat... Come on, buddy. And 
there's Fisher's Flat right there. Not to give you a hot spot. There's fish on it all the time. Now, Drew and I can sit here and figure out, okay, we're going to start in the south end. I'll mark a few spots and we'll dictate how we might plan our day. So Navionics is super cool, super functional. Uh, oh. It can also be a safety tool. You can plot yes. your course and get yourself off the ice. Let's say there's a blizzard or something to that effect as well. Yeah, well, you can mark your, your starting and ending point, mm -hmm. too. I do it a lot. I'll be like, do I bring the four-wheeler or can I just walk? Right. And I'll be like, oh, it looks like I could easily walk that distance. Well, easy to say from yeah. behind the computer screen. And then you drop the, <laughs> Especially drop the, the distance mark and you're like, oh, God, that's three miles. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're walking that. Yeah. But, Everything's uh, further on my axe. I was going to say, too. I use Navionics on my open water, mm -hmm. on my boat all the time, and I'll drop waypoints out there like, hey, maybe there's one rock right here that might hold fish, or right. there's a there's a weed line right here that I want to fish. Well, that weed line will be there when it when it caps over, so yeah. that's a good starting spot. Doing your homework in the fall. Exactly. Absolutely. Open so water homework. Navionics, we could do an entire video on this. There's all kinds of features. Look into it if you have it. Many of you might have it, but that's helping you do your homework. You know, things like the DNR website. I know Drew uses the DNR website a lot. Yeah, There's yeah. so many features on that, like a Minnesota DNR website. A lot of states have their own websites that talks about different lake information. Yeah. Um, walk through some of the DNR well, I, stuff. I think I always start on just, there's Lake Finder, which has been around for years, and we, everyone talks about it. What I've been using lately is just the recreation compass. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's the map of the state, and you can zoom in, zoom out, and you have all these lakes, like, for example, here's Leech Lake. All I gotta do is click on it. Gives me the water body, Leech. Boom, opens another tab. Here I have my survey. I can sure. see what's in the lake, which you should do this for anywhere you're considering fishing because it gives you an idea of what's in there. I mean, like we were saying earlier, take with a grain of salt, like maybe they netted the lake 10 years ago. Sure. That probably won't be up to date with what's going on, especially right. if it's a lake that's been hit hard. Um, but yeah, it gives you the fish stocking, what have you. Also, what's kind of neat about just the rec compass is it'll show something like, yeah, hey, here's the Paul Bunyan State Forest. You know, I can see, okay, here's the road that drives right through it. I got some trails. Maybe I want to get back to this tuck back right. lake, you know, in the middle of the forest. So, I mean, rec compass is great for that. It's just, it's great for Minnesota specifically. Right. Uh, and on top, finding access spots. Finding access, yeah. It'll yeah. show you all the, look at all these, all these red deals here where you can get a boat in. Sometimes they'll have like, right here you can get a canoe in. Sure. You know, like, obviously, for ice fishing, you can probably mm -hmm. access there. You know, park along the side of the road. Um, but, yeah, Rec Compass, Rec Compass is great for Minnesota. It gives you all the links to the lake survey and stuff. But I like to, I deer hunt a lot. Uh, if, anyone who's in Minnesota and who likes to public land hunt, whether it's birds or deer, like, you probably have other sorts of apps. You know, like, I use I use uh, Onyx a lot. There's mm -hmm. Hunt Smart, stuff like that. And just scouting like little points that you can access a lake. Like maybe right. it's a piece of tax forfeit land. Maybe it's state land. Uh, maybe you didn't realize that that's someone's private land and you might have a relation to them or you can go mm -hmm. knock on their door. Right. You know, like we were just chatting, like there's a one lake that we're kind of curious about and only one person, they own almost probably 99% of that lake. Mm -hmm. But there's one little sliver where we could maybe sneak on, but we were thinking we might just ask the person right. for permission before yeah. we invade their private lake so i mean one of my favorite ways to access a lake i fish a lot uh it's a, only a winter access yeah. you can't get on this it's not a boat access it's not a canoe it's just a little path you can drive on and i'll tell you what that put, puts me right on the spot right where i mm -hmm. want to be and the closest access to that is like two miles away so without seeing some of this and doing some homework mm -hmm. i would never have known that access exists and i'll tell you what it's helped me become way more efficient uh, ice oh, fishing sure. is, is unique in that regard. Uh, in the summer, you're limited. You need a boat launch, right? You've got to have a boat launch. You're not dumping your boat through the rhubarb. But in the wintertime, yeah. there's little paths and trails that are blazed, and that's where it brings in, like, Google Maps. You can see some of that stuff. Yeah. And when you tie all this into your networking with your friends and your buddies, I've learned about accesses from you or from friends or people yeah. that are like, oh, you're going to go to this lake? Hey, access on the northeast corner. There's no lake access up there there's no public launch yeah but people are driving out in the winter time never would have realized that existed so mm -hmm. all of your homework again it equates to being prepared and also equates to efficiency well like if i'm going to otter tail county like look at there there's a lot of lakes here you know like mm -hmm. if i have my heart set on otter tail lake and for whatever reason i can't get out there the bite sucks whatever i'm probably going to click on at least 20 of these and just see, see what's, what's in cooking. there because yeah. like you know what 
if it stinks on our tail, I'm gonna go grab lunch somewhere. I'm gonna just gonna drive around and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's some houses out. Okay, there's probably some fish in there. Yeah, and I've already looked because I've checked out the lake finder and rec compass. And hey, I'm gonna go try to catch a fish. You might find a new hot bite. Yep. So uh, also back to just your standard Google Maps. I'm sure uh, everyone knows like you can go through historical uh, overlays. You know, like I can see what last year's fall picture looked. Like. I can sure. see what ten years ago looked like. Well, that helps me out a lot because mm -hmm. you can, if you look closely, you can see uh, grass flats. You can see where some trails have been cut in the woods. Weeds, you can, depressions. Yeah, on, you can see when a lake is on a low level year, you'll see the shallow flats easier, stuff like that. Maybe a weed line that you probably wouldn't know about, you know, if yep. it's your first time to the lake. But, heck, drop a waypoint, you know, find get the exact coordinates from Google Earth, punch it in avionics, and it'll take you right to it. And I've seen even where, where you look at the different years you can see actually where pressure ridges form year after year after yeah. year after year and you may actually help you decide oh i might want to access in the north end there's been a pressure ridge that goes across that main point yeah. the last seven years yeah so there's things like that so there, there's so much technology here i mean yeah. we're, we're talking about a lot we are uh, we're not trying to overwhelm you uh, but this is a super important topic it's if we a, if we we wouldn't address it if it's not it's a puzzle piece that every angler is going to have to figure out at mm -hmm. some point you start here and you have all this information and you try to get it all enhanced into catching fish, right? Mm -hmm. And there's so many ways to go about it. And I don't know, it's my personal favorite way to catch fish is just do it all on your own and, yep. and try to learn on your, your own. Yep. It's just so satisfying. But And I think if you look at most successful ice anglers or most successful anglers, period, and you ask any one of them how often are they doing fishing homework, they're all going to look at you and say it's vital. It's vital to the success. It's the stuff oftentimes... Uh, just like a test, just like an athlete, it's the things you do when you're not playing the game or not yes. taking the test or not actually on the water. It's the other stuff you do, the practice, the preparation, things like that, that can really help you be more successful at whatever you're doing. So yeah, you see people absolutely. holding big fish in their Instagram posts. Well, guess what? That's probably the one day of the week they hammered them. <laughs> you see the good stuff. You generally <laughs> yeah. see the good stuff on Facebook. Uh, and, and, and we're as guilty of, as, uh, of oh, it, yeah. too. We don't always show you the bad stuff. You um, know, Just because I'm holding a nice blue, it doesn't mean I, no I grinded it out for yeah. three or four oh, hours man. to catch oh, yeah, that, that was the only fish. one we got. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Um, but we're throwing a lot at you. But the, the rule of thumb is... Do your homework, get ready, get prepared. You know, we want to make sure you're ready to have the most and the best experience on the ice. So homework's important. Get ready for that test. And at the end of the day, just have fun. Have fun and you got to go out there and do it. You can't catch from the couch. You can get ready on the couch. You can't catch them from the couch. So at the end of the day, get out there, have some fun catching fish. Good luck.